In the world of fashion, where trends come and go, one brand stands out as a timeless symbol of style, class, and success, Lacoste. We have an extraordinary tale to share in today's video. We're diving into the captivating journey of a brand that started from a simple joke and became a multi-million dollar empire. Get ready to learn about the incredible story of Lacoste and how it became a household name worldwide. To truly understand the origins of Lacoste, we must delve into the early life of its founder, Jean-René Lacoste. Born on the 2nd of July 1904 in France, René came from a prominent family with a wealthy background. His parents were Jean-Marie Magdalene Nareu, Lep and Champion rower, and inventor Jean-Jules Lacoste. However, while he got his father's knack for inventing, his passion set him on a different path, tennis. René Lacoste's journey into tennis began at a young age. He took an interest in playing tennis at age 15 when he accompanied his father on a trip to England. As a young man, René Lacoste had the opportunity to attend the Polytechnique, which was the most renowned engineering school in France. However, he took a daring leap by pursuing a tennis career, particularly in 1922 when tennis was still in its amateur era. It was a risky move. The competitive tennis circuits during that time were not very financially rewarding. Here he was, the son of an accomplished family throwing his future into some new non-sport that was barely socially accepted just yet. With a remarkable display of trust, René's prominent industrialist father allowed him to pursue his ambitions. However, he imposed a time limit of only five years for René to achieve championship status. Through his exceptional talent and unwavering dedication, René Lacoste swiftly ascended to the ranks of top-tier players in just three years. In 1923, when the Davis Cup held equal significance to the Grand Slam tournaments, René was honored to join the already formidable lineup, consisting of Jean Buratra, Henri Cachet, and Jacques Brugnon, as part of the French team. Together, they became the most feared quartet in Davis Cup history so exceptional that they earned the revered nickname the Four Musketeers from their fans. René developed a baseline game out of necessity and became a three-time singles champion at the French Open, securing his nation's most cherished title in 1925, 1927, and 1929. He also claimed the Wimbledon Singles Championship in 1925 and 1928 and achieved back-to-back -back victories at the United States Open in 1926 and 1927, earning him the world number one ranking in both years. His victory in the 1927 United States Open final against another tennis great, Bill Tilden, with a score of 11-9, 6-3, 11-9, was regarded as a classic example of the relentless focus required for a proficient backcourt player to triumph over the aggressive attacking style favored by the powerful Tilden. Despite being 22 years old and 12 years younger than Tilden, Lacoste's determination proved overwhelming for Tilden's considerable talents. But there's an intriguing twist to his story, a nickname that would forever change his life. You may be curious why René Lacoste is famously nicknamed the Alligator by the American press or the Crocodile by his French fans. Let's uncover the story behind this intriguing moniker. It all began in 1926 when the French Davis Cup team reached the World Group Final. During that crucial match, René made a bet with his team captain. The bet entailed René winning a crocodile skin suitcase he had noticed in a Boston shop window if he emerged victorious. Although he didn't win that particular match, the American press caught wind of the story and he earned himself the nickname The Alligator, a nickname that coincidentally represented René's tenacious playing style resembling an alligator that refuses to let go. Embracing this lighthearted joke and seeing its suitability, René's friend Robert George embroidered a crocodile into a shirt and gave it to René as a gift. René introduced a crocodile logo on his tennis shirts in his next game, forever etching his mark on the fashion industry. Inspired by the gift, René Lacoste conceived the idea of designing a line of sports shirts featuring the alligator logo sewn onto them. This innovation marked a groundbreaking moment in history as it was likely the first time a logo was ever stitched onto the exterior of clothing. With his tennis career soaring, Lacoste saw an opportunity beyond the court. In 1933, he partnered with an entrepreneur named André Gillier to establish the iconic Lacoste brand, La Société Chimise Lacoste. Gillier, the owner and president of the most prominent French knitwear manufacturing firm at the time, brought his expertise in textiles and production to the partnership, while Lacoste contributed his innovative ideas and sporting experience. The brand's breakthrough product was the revolutionary tennis shirt, also known as a polo shirt, which Lacoste often wore when playing. 
The shirt featured a unique design with a buttoned placket, short sleeves, and a flat knit collar. It was made from a lightweight fabric called Jersey Petite Piquet, which provided exceptional comfort and breathability on the tennis court. To distinguish the shirts, Lacoste had a crocodile, usually considered an alligator, embroidered on the chest, which became the brand's iconic logo. The introduction of the Lacoste tennis shirt brought a new level of style and elegance to the world of sportswear. Until then, tennis attire was predominantly made up of long-sleeved shirts, trousers, and ties. Lacoste's innovative design not only offered greater freedom of movement, but also brought a sense of casual sophistication to the tennis courts. It quickly caught the attention of athletes and enthusiasts, who embraced the brand's quality and distinctive style. Lacoste's tennis shirts became a symbol of athleticism and refinement in the following years. They were favored not only by tennis players, but also by golfers and other athletes. The brand's success skyrocketed, leading to the expansion of its product line to include a wide range of sportswear and lifestyle items. Lacoste continued to innovate and incorporate its signature crocodile logo into various designs, cementing its status as a globally recognized fashion brand. Despite facing challenges during World War II, Lacoste endured and thrived in the post-war years. The brand's popularity continued to grow, both in Europe and across the Atlantic, as it gained a strong following in the United States. As Lacoste's reputation continued to soar, the brand set its sights on expanding its presence and conquering the American market. However, they encountered a distinct challenge. They needed help to obtain the license to sell their products under the original Lacoste brand name. So the Lacoste brand strategically decided to make its clothing more accessible to the American audience. In the 1950s, Lacoste collaborated with the American clothing company, Izod. This partnership allowed them to navigate the licensing obstacle by introducing a new line of clothing known as Izod Lacoste, specifically produced and licensed for sale in the United States. This collaboration effectively merged the strengths of both brands and enabled Lacoste to establish a strong foothold in the American market. The Izod Lacoste line prominently featured the iconic Lacoste logo, which displayed the crocodile image. This logo was a powerful symbol of the brand's heritage and identity. The collaboration between Lacoste and Izod proved to be a strategic move that enabled Lacoste to overcome the licensing challenge and propelled its popularity and recognition in the United States. This rebranding aimed to capture the American spirit while preserving the brand's essence, with its iconic crocodile logo serving as a testament to the legacy of Rene Lacoste. The Lacoste shirt quickly became a fashion statement on the tennis courts and in everyday life. However, this partnership with Izod ended when David Crystal, the owner of Izod, began to face financial trouble due to other poor investments. As a result, Izod decided to sell its share of Lacoste to the original French company. In 1993, the partnership between Lacoste and Izod eventually reached its conclusion. At that time, Lacoste strategically moved to regain exclusive distribution rights for its shirts under its brand in the United States, making it a significant milestone for Lacoste as it sought to establish complete control over its products and brand presence in the American market. In 1977, Latigue Clothing was founded to directly compete with Lacoste in the U.S. market, selling a similar array of clothing but featuring a tiger instead of the signature Lacoste crocodile. While Latigue provided competition for Lacoste during its early years, it never surpassed Lacoste in terms of brand recognition or market share. Lacoste ultimately came out on top, remaining a prominent and influential brand in the U.S. market. Following the passing of René Lacoste in 1996 at the age of 92, his son Bernard Lacoste took the helm of the company, assuming the role of head. With a deep-rooted commitment to carrying on his father's legacy, Bernard recognized the need to inject new energy into the Lacoste brand. Bernard Lacoste hired a new fashion designer named René Lemaire to spearhead this revitalization. With Lemaire's creative vision and expertise, the aim was to reinvigorate the brand name and iconic logo, ensuring Lacoste would continue to resonate with consumers worldwide. Under Lemaire's watchful eye, Lacoste experienced a notable resurgence in sales and regained its standing as a leading global brand. Lemaire's decisions brought a fresh perspective to Lacoste's collections, incorporating contemporary trends while staying true to the brand's core values of sporty elegance and sophistication. With Lemaire's guidance, Lacoste successfully navigated the evolving fashion landscape, appealing to loyal customers and a new generation of fashion-conscious individuals. The brand's rejuvenation resonated with consumers, leading to a strong rebound in sales worldwide. In early 2005, Bernard Lacoste, who had been leading Lacoste as the company's president, faced a severe illness that affected his ability to continue his active involvement in the business. Recognizing the need for a smooth transition and ensuring the company's continued success, Bernard decided to transfer the presidency of Lacoste to his younger brother, Michel Lacoste. 
Michel Lacoste had been a close collaborator and trusted partner of Bernard for many years, with an innate understanding of the Lacoste brand and its values. Michael assumed the role of president to steer the company forward during this challenging period. Bernard Lacoste's health deteriorated, and tragically, he passed away in Paris on the 21st of March 2006. His passing marked the end of an era for the Lacoste family and the company they had dedicated their lives to building. Bernard's contributions and leadership played a significant role in shaping Lacoste into the globally recognized brand it had become. The loss of Bernard was undoubtedly a profound moment for the Lacoste family, its employees, and the wider fashion community. However, under Michelle Lacoste's guidance, the legacy and vision of Lacoste continued to thrive. Today, Lacoste continues to make waves in the fashion industry, captivating the hearts of celebrities, athletes, and fashion enthusiasts worldwide. The brand has expanded its product range to a whole new level. In June 2007, Lacoste took a significant step by launching its e-commerce site catering to the U.S. market. This move allowed customers to conveniently access and purchase Lacoste products online, expanding the brand's reach and enhancing its digital presence. In 2009, Lacoste chose to select actor Hayden Christensen as the face of their challenge fragrance for men. Christensen's association with the brand added a touch of celebrity allure and helped promote the fragrance to a wider audience. In September 2010, Christophe Lemaire, the creative manager of Lacoste at the time, decided to step down from his role. His departure created an opportunity for Felipe Oliveira Baptista to assume the position of creative manager, entrusted with continuing Lacoste's legacy of innovation and style. The Rene Lacoste Foundation was established as a community program that provides opportunities for children to participate in sports activities within their schools. This initiative aimed to promote physical fitness, well-being, and teamwork among young individuals. In 2017, renowned tennis player Novak Djokovic was named as the brand ambassador for Lacoste, earning the title The New Crocodile, alongside René Lacoste himself. Djokovic's association with Lacoste included a five-year contract, appearances in advertising campaigns, and representing the brand's values both on and off the tennis court. The partnership proved successful and was extended for an additional three years. Recognizing the importance of the Asian Pacific market, Lacoste appointed Chinese singer-actor Zi Tao as their brand spokesperson for the region in September 2019. It marked the brand's first dedicated appointment for the Asia Pacific region to strengthen Lacoste's presence and connection with consumers in this vital market. Lacoste also engaged in notable collaborations to expand its offerings. In 2017, 2018, and 2019, Lacoste teamed up with the famous streetwear brand and Supreme to release a series of co-branded clothing collections. These collaborations combined the distinct styles of both brands, creating limited edition pieces that garnered significant attention and appeal. In 2018, Louise Trotter assumed the role of creative director of Lacoste, bringing her creative vision and expertise to the brand. Her appointment signaled a new chapter for Lacoste, as Trotter aimed to elevate the brand's aesthetic further and strengthen its position in the fashion industry. However, in January 2023, after a successful four-year tenure, Trotter departed, leaving a lasting impact on the brand's creative direction. Looking to expand its fragrance offerings, Lacoste entered into a 15-year worldwide licensing agreement with Inner Parfums in late 2022. This strategic partnership signaled Lacoste's intention to launch a new line of perfumes in 2024, marking the end of its previous association with Cody Inc. The collaboration aimed to bring captivating fragrances to consumers worldwide, further enhancing Lacoste's brand portfolio. These developments and collaborations highlight Lacoste's ongoing commitment to innovation, expanding its reach into new markets, and continuously evolving its product offerings to meet the demands of a dynamic and ever-changing fashion landscape. Let us remember Lacoste not only for its iconic crocodile logo or its stylish creations, but for the audacity and relentless pursuit of excellence that brought it to life. Rene Lacoste's unwavering determination and the brand's ability to adapt and innovate have solidified its place as a timeless symbol of sophistication and class. Lacoste reminds us that dreams can evolve into something extraordinary, even born from a simple jest. It stands as a testament to the power of passion, resilience, and the audacity to defy conventions. Until next time, ciao.